Hey, I shouldn't be telling you this, but if you skip this part of the video, you will miss out on the deal of a lifetime. If you click the link in the description, you will see that Atlas VPN are giving out an offer to get a three year subscription for just $1.83 per month. That's less than Netflix's latest price increase. Plus, it comes with three months for free and a 30 day money back guarantee. It's the best VPN on the market and you can use it to watch shows that are not available on streaming services in your country. So you can watch Friends on UK Netflix no matter where you are in the world, as long as you have a subscription to Netflix. You can even use it on unlimited devices. So everyone in your house can watch Friends on UK Netflix at once. And they keep your searches private so that we'll all finally stop spying on you. But remember, time is of the essence if you want to get this offer. Just $1.83 per month to get a three year subscription by clicking the link in the description below. Update X refuses to let me get an abortion and I just can't have this baby. Here's the link to my original post. I want to start this update off by saying a huge thank you to everyone who gave me advice, resources, and just words of encouragement. Thank you so much. So yesterday after I read all of the replies, I had a really long heart to heart with my ex about this situation. I expressed that his distance and the whole idea of me essentially being a human incubator, really put me off. I told him to just be straight up and tell me what he wanted, because he kept changing his mind on everything we agreed on. He apologized to me and said he really didn't mean for things to be this way and that he was so sorry for putting me through this. He then told me he didn't actually know what he wanted and that the whole situation was freaking him out. He continued by asking me if I really thought abortion was a good option, that he had been thinking about it deep down too. I said that while I was hesitant and scared to, it is the best decision. Neither of us are mentally ready for this child. We spoke on it for a bit and ultimately decided to get an abortion. We'll be traveling together for it soon. I'm scared and I'm not sure how I'll feel going in, but I know that this is the best decision all around. I'm hopeful that I'm making a good choice. Again, thank you so much for all of the advice. It really helped. Too long did not read. Me and X had a heart to heart and ultimately agreed to get an abortion. I am glad you two could come together at this difficult time with this difficult decision. You are scared and that is why it is so important that you two are there for each other after. Please take care. The most common feeling after an abortion is relief. It may not be the only feeling, and that's okay. Just know that you're making a choice for yourself. Fuck anyone who tries to make you feel less than the human you are. Love when communication triumphs. Glad the communication came to an agreement. But please be ready when it comes. An abortion will still have an effect on you or both of you mentally and emotionally, and for you physically. Make sure you have your support system in line in case you need them. Best of luck XX. For future reference, you do not need their permission. Don't ever feel like you do. Don't let him back out of it. Don't let him put you in a corner. Get an Uber there if he refuses to go. Finally stood up for myself to cheating fiancé. Hey everyone. In short, fiancé had affair starting in July, going on dates, PA, even meeting up with a P overseas. I was trickled truth and found out the majority in September. She found my Reddit profile, Teach and Score, which has my entire story. I finally did it. Even after D-Day, she was lying to me about still seeing AP. On Tuesday, her Gmail was up on my computer. I remembered seeing a name come across her phone, and decided at random to search the name. I found Airbnb receipts, emails, and a folder of photos of them on their dates, kissing, as recent as last weekend. The visuals flipped the switch. The next night, I sat down with my family and told them everything. I couldn't lie to them anymore. I felt a weight lifted off my shoulders. My parents were happy they and my fiancé had a lot of history. I sent her a text to gather her things and please move out to live with her mom. She said it wasn't cool I flipped a switch and kicked her out. The next night, she stopped by to grab more things. She went through my Apple Watch and found out I told my family. She flipped through my clothes outside, saying this is all my fault sucked in bed, didn't have sex enough. Let your little forum make you believe you were perfect and if you did everything right this would have still happened. BTW, she never said I was bad in bed during relationship. Edit. Not saying I am perfect, but I supported and provided for her and was always there emotionally. Those three things are undeniable. Now, she's texting me she misses me, whiling to do anything to be together. She doesn't want to move out. 
Yet, when asked, still won't come clean about still seeing a P. You had months you saw me at my worst and kept seeing a P. I saved the photos and emails for evidence. Seeing all of it just changed me entirely. It's like my brain won't let me get sad anymore when I have those bad waves. I can't get those pictures out of my head. I feel as if I am able to finally move on by not having her here. TL. DL. Lied to since D-Day. Came across pictures, stood up for myself and had WP move out. Now they are wanting to stay together. Let her see your posts and try to flip the situation around and blame you for the shortcomings of the relationship. Projection at its finest. If the sex is so bad, you end the relationship. You don't have an affair and gaslight the other person making them feel they are insane for thinking it. That's all cruel behavior. She misses you because she is caught and never thought you would leave, and just thought she can just have her cake and eat it. Also if she is cheating and sleeping around, I would get checked for your safety. The more she talks the more evidence that she is not a safe life partner. She is selfish, entitled, deceitful, immoral, and has zero empathy for you. Plus she's outrageously manipulative. I suggest zero contact. Block her on everything. Do not respond to anything she says or does. Kick that completely out of your life, pronto. You don't need that. Good. It's called taking out the trash. I just hope you got the engagement ring back. I wish you well. Telling him about disabled sibling? Hi. So we've been going out about two months now, and he knows I have two siblings. One of my siblings is mentally challenged, I'm wondering how to bring this up with him. My previous relationship fell apart because he thought I would be the one who would have to care for my sibling when my parents can no longer. And this is not true, parents understand that I will not able to care for her properly, so we have discussed alternative living options for her, but this is all in the future. I don't know if this is normal, but I'm scared of the reaction this guy will have, worried it would be the same way. I want to bring it up at our next date. Should I just casually mention she has a mental health disability and leave it at that? Or should I somehow point it out that he doesn't have to worry about us becoming her caretakers or whatever in the future? I feel like mentioning that is presumptuous, but I don't want him to get the wrong idea and get scared. I love my sister so much, but I know I could never provide proper care for her, and wouldn't expect my partner to either. I've had bad experiences in the past with this, so has my other sister with people who think it will somehow affect them. Your previous partner did you a favor. There is nothing to be embarrassed about, nothing to be ashamed of, and no reason any reasonable person would hold it against you. A person who has a problem with your sister won't be a person who sticks around if you get into a bad situation anyway. Tell him like you told us. It doesn't matter, if he's a good person he'll stay, he'll ask question before judging. If it makes him run away, then you dodged a bullet op. My wife angry at me because I didn't get our son name on my arm. I love tattoos I'm a tattoo guy I've been one since high school. I have two kids, 12, 16, from an old relationship I never thought I'd have more kids so after I got my daughter's names I just went nuts with tats and never looked back. The problem now is I did end up having another kid he's a year old now and my wife asked me why I haven't got his name on my arm like my other kids. She knows both of my arms are full so there isn't anywhere I could put his name my daughters both have long names, Ashley and Aaliyah. My son name is also long so if I did get his name it'd mess up my other tats. I'm being accused of treating my son different because I can't get a tat of his name like my other kids. I love them all the same I just never thought I'd have another kid so I didn't leave space for any names. Any advice on what I can do? Info. Does it have to be on your arm? Surely you have space elsewhere if you really wanted it. Either way I think you should put your son's name somewhere else on your body. Not for your wife but for him. Imagine how heartbroken he would be when you tell him yeah I have your sisters but not you. Just not a good look you know. Power move. Tattoo your name on him. Ask her to point out the space on your arms that is available to accommodate another long name. Maybe when she can't find one herself she'll be a little more flexible. Get his name tattooed somewhere beside ease your arms. I like tattoos too. If I ever have kids ill probably do something like that for them. Why can't you get his name done on your back, leg, chest, or ribs? Never mind. Just saw that she wanted it to be on your arms. I think she's going to have to be a little more open-minded lol if your arms are full there's nothing that can be done about that. 